local elections that could have a big impact in Washington. Political analyst Tom Serafin back with us. And uh, Tom, let's start with the 10th district. We're looking at Bob Dole, Brad Schneider. Very close race. Two candidates kind of competing for the title of most moderate, it seems like. What do you see here in this race? Well, remember, this is a new district carved out by the democratically controlled legislature. It's dominated by Democrats. So Schneider should be doing better than he is. Right now, Dole's ahead. And, uh, and my guess is that Dole wins that race. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, now the one that, boy, Joe Walsh, Tammy Duckworth, you talk about a highly... Yeah. Contentious, highly, right? Yeah, I mean, exactly. Fill in the blank. Yeah. So, so where do you see this thing? The, the polls continue to show that Duckworth is in the lead. Would you be surprised if he doesn't hang on to it today? I'd be surprised. I mean, it was close for a long time. Then they got into the abortion issue, the deadbeat dad issue, et cetera, et cetera. And she's kind of pulled away. Remember, this is another democratically designed district so that she has waited with the vote. She's got the vote to win if she gets her vote out. She should win that race. No excuses for not winning that race if, if you're Tammy Duckworth. Because the lines were basically redrawn for, right. in her right. favor yeah. to elect her. Right. They designed the map so that there are more Democrat voters than Republican voters in those congressional districts. And elections have consequences, and that's why the legislature can do that, because it's controlled by Democrats. Let's talk about another hotly contested yeah. race. Uh, Judy Bigger, Bill Foster, what do you see there, Tom? Now, that's, that's the same kind of thing. Judy Bigger, it, is, it was designed so that her house was carved out of this district, the new district, just by a couple blocks. So she's running in, the, in a new district. 30% is new for her. 33% uh, of her old district and 33% from Bill Foster's old district, who was a congressman at one time. That's a dead dead heat. I, I, I can't tell you who's going to win that race. Uh, Bill Foster hasn't distinguished himself as a congressman when he was there. Judy Bigger has also got the same issues. So uh, they're both trying to do something new this time around. I don't think Judy Bigger is going to be in Congress much longer if she does win. Uh, people may think Bill Foster is going to be around longer. He's one of the Rahm Emanuel selections when Rahm was running the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee. He's kind of a moderate, dead heat. If you get out the vote, your candidate can win that race. Should be a Democrat race, but right now it isn't. It's, it's a toss-up. Boy, how much money has been spent on these three congressional races this year? It is unbelievable. Twenty, twenty-five million, and you also have the Sherry Bustis race, right. with Schilling in Rockford, Rock Island. That's a dead heat. He's a Republican, done a very good job, but again, another democratically drawn district where Sherry Bustis should be way ahead. It's a dead heat. No surprises there. She might win that race, and she does. That would be a big victory for the downstate. Down Democrats. Her dad is Gene Callahan, who ran the party for a long time downstate. Most people go to see him if they want to run for office statewide. Everybody in the state, including Dick Durbin, is involved in that race. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, a, that's a hotly contested race. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are you going to be watching early tonight? I mean, as you start, I know you process these and you've been doing this for so many years. As you start looking at the, the polls and what's coming in, Tom, what, what is it you'll be focusing in on? Well, what's, what's, what's kind of neat is that it's all in the eastern time zone. If Obama wins Virginia, it's going to be very difficult, a bad omen for the Romney people. Romney wins Virginia, uh, and he's looking good in Pennsylvania. If he's winning in the Cincinnati portion of Ohio, I mean, those are areas where you want to look in. Those polls close early, uh, 7.15, 7.30 our time, but the numbers start coming in, and, he's, and Romney is doing well there. It's going to be a long night. Mm -hmm. If he's not doing well there, it's a short night. Four years ago, uh, we kind of knew where it was going, and it was called by all the networks by, I want to say, 10 o'clock our time. Yeah. How deep into the night do you think it'll go tonight? Well, there are going to be fewer uh, people doing those, those election polls after people vote, so you're not going to see a lot of it from around the country, so it's very targeted. I think the networks and people are going to be very cautious based on what happened in 2001 with the 2000 when we had the Florida situation. Mm. So people are going to be, you know, it's so close, people are going to be sitting back and saying, let me just wait around. <laughs> so right. I, think you're, right. I think, you know, 10 o'clock, midnight, you know, maybe tomorrow morning. Yeah. I mean, to, maybe tomorrow morning. Sure. Tom, i got to sure. ask you a question about polls, because so much in our business, and generally when you talk to people, is placed on the polls and, and, and what they mean. Historically, in very close races, how good has the polling been when you later look at the results? Historically, it's never been at this level of sophistication before. We've never had the numbers of the scores and scores of polls that have come our way. There are so many polls that are coming out today that suggest that Mitt Romney is statistically tied, but those polls are weighted with more Democrats asking more Democrats how they feel than Republicans. So the, uh, the gut tells you that the polls 
can't be accurate because we don't see that enthusiasm with the Democrats as you see with the Republicans. But the mind tells you this is a science mm -hmm. and having been through this before on the losing side <laughs> and a couple you times. You didn't want to believe the polls. No, you did. <laughs> but the numbers usually come out the way they, the numbers we're looking at. So, mm -hmm. you know, you, you, to, to be honest with you, they're more often correct than they are not. Mm -hmm. But because of what's going on today nationally and how you're isolated on seven states, Virginia, Florida, Colorado, uh, uh, Iowa, Ohio, and Wisconsin, you're kind of saying to yourself, you can tell which ones are going to go based on their early reports tonight. So uh, the answer to your question, yes, they're probably more right than they are wrong. All right. However, because of the, the, the strangeness of this entire election, mm -hmm. uh, it could go either way. It's turnout, turnout, turnout. Uh huh. Well, Tom, we'll thanks so much. Thank you. Tom Serafin. Our election coverage continues all day long. We're going to cut into regular programming to bring you live updates if there are any voting issues. Then join us for a special 5 o'clock half hour election special later tonight. Two hours of results starting at 9 o'clock. And then join us tomorrow morning here on Good Day Chicago. We'll start breaking down the races starting at 430. Okay, let's go to the guy in charge here.